we were like going, oh, where's Jorge? So that was George Smith's Spanish word for George. And we're going, where's Jorge? Where's Jorge? Like this one, he'd stumbled off to the left. And we went, no, like this. Because we were going up the, uh, yeah. up the uh, fire escape. <laughs> <laughs> of the Aussie Rugby Show. I'm Louise Ransom. We are in Balmain this week at the Cat and Fiddle Pub, joined... Mother Wolves. Yeah. ..as always by Drew Mitchell, Stephen Hoyles and Sean Maloney. One of your 17 clubs that you played with, Drew And, and they paid well. Subby's, <laughs> Subby's team paid well. You now own this pub <laughs> as a result of a oh, couple look, of games, don't you? They're one of the few. What about them, though? The Mighty Muzzled Wolves, yeah. as you say, Lou, sponsored by the Cat and Fiddle. Hell of a pub. So this, this is the best thing we've had so far. We've had some good venues we've been to. Wood but they've looked, up, looked after us tonight. Oh, bellissimo. <laughs> they're, they're so they're, good. They're a great club. They've got players from so many different nations come around. They've recruited well. They've, they've, got a, they've actually had a bit of a history. Of course, I played here for a little bit. When I say a little bit, maybe that many games. Um, <laughs> We got Gits down, Makido, he played Sebastian a game. Sebastian Chabelle played here. Sebastian Chabelle, he came all the way over and played a game of curtain raiser to one of the super games at Nains Stadium. Matt Dunning, Ryan Cross. Uh, it ben actually, Robinson was coaching. They kind of actually, stage. yeah, they and so uh, James Stenard, Chucky Stenard, yep. the seventh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Hall of Famer. So yeah. uh, they actually changed the rules about how subbies teams could play. Oh, could pay players, yeah. I think, as a result, because uh, the, ATO, the mighty yeah. muzzles some were just too good. ATO issues. <laughs> no, there wasn't, wasn't any of that. There was just a bit of jealousy issues from some of the other subbies. Sure. Petersham. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Petersham in a few weeks. Well, we then, are. He's we not, are. then you can chop yeah. them off we're until then. Yeah. Town. <laughs> <laughs> if you do want us to uh, go to your rugby club to film the show, please get in touch on us, all our socials. We're confined to New South Wales at the moment, guys, because of COVID, but... Um, Looking forward to getting yeah. to a few more places. Also, looking forward to this segment we always do to start the show. What got you, Drew? Let's kick it off. OK, what got me over the weekend? Uh, a couple of little things. Obviously, I'd, I'd had a pretty big July, it's fair to say. Uh, 2020, more like I, I woke up, more uh, like it. Woke, <laughs> woke up a couple of days after Kirtley's wedding and thought, I need to get healthy again. So I ordered myself a juice cleanse. Juice cleanse started. Three-day juice cleanse. Don't eat anything, just the juices. Started on Saturday morning. I get a phone call on Thursday. Big Wendell Sailor. We're, um, we're doing some work down, in, obviously, in Sydney, or up in Sydney, he lives down in Wollongong. Do you mind if I stay at your house on Friday? I said, mate, would love to have you. You know, that would be my honour. He's my first roomie going into uh, professional sport. Um, and then Friday became Saturday, became Sunday. And when you're trying to do a juice cleanse, it's not really that conducive if you've got Big Wendell Sailor staying with you. So, Wendell um, hydrated by about four litres of... Coca-Cola pre-game, like he was, he was not a water man at no, all. No, I can't imagine being a juice man either. And then he would say, mate, you know, like, thanks so much for having me. I'll, I'll shout you breakfast. Let's go for breakfast. <laughs> mate, I'm having a juice. <laughs> uh, but he's, he's got great energy. He's, he's a, a guy that kind of gave me a lot of time. Wasn't Taft plotting out with you as well? Yeah, we ran into Taft. He had a, 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 a lunch man. down at uh, Bondi for his birthday over the weekend. Coming from the west into the east, uh, have a birthday at North We Pond should get Wendell on the show at some stage. Wendell wants know? to get on the show. Does Wendell he? just wants to get in front of the yeah, camera. Yeah, right. Right. He, like, yeah. literally the whole time, I, I saw his pecker more than my own over the weekend, right? Like, he, he doesn't stay clone. Like, hard to miss. He, we're at home, yeah, it's hard to miss. Um, but, Big just, Wendy's, just, I think it was once referred to. He, he just walks around my house and he looks and goes, mate, look at this, it's not even fair, I'm 46. Like, look at this, mate. Like, God bless me with this body, like, oh. He's and the whole hard. time he's just like, yeah. Anyway, um, I had to tell him a number of times I could put some clothes on. And, <laughs> but he's a good man. I, he gave me a lot of time and uh, a lot of his, um, I guess, experience he Get passed him on. In. So Get him anything in. Anything I can do to help Get him. Get him in. Well, what and, got uh, me... And just, like, hanging out with him. Was un, it's not nudity. It was a fully clothed Christian Lilefano mm. running the water for the Brumbies yeah. on the weekend. Yep. Obviously, he finished with the Brumbies last year, went up to Japan, and he's yep. home because of COVID. I don't know if I... I I wouldn't be too surprised if I saw him running out there for the Brumbies over the next few weeks. Lola oh, Seo is nice. out for the oh, yeah. an extended yeah, period of time, a four yeah. to six week, maybe eight week hamstring injury. Yeah. So maybe there's a little bit more to it. That's that's not a bad chat. What yeah. got me? Uh, I had my first foray into deep fried whole fish. I don't know if you guys <laughs> ever had it before. That's what? my first little thing. So I ordered myself a bunch of whole fish the other day at a restaurant in Manly after we were there for the shoot shield mm. game. Yep. And it, it came out sat upright. It's an upright whole fish and you, you strip it 
you strip it into the sauce, you have that. That was what got me first, never had before. In so my I thought mind. being in Japan for the whole World Cup, you would have you, tried you can't the get that fair, mate. You can't no? get that fair. I tell yeah, you what, fresh over there. you know who's come back you from Japan? You also tried the wild. Let me segue. Oh, you told me off there, you had let, some wild. Let, oh, let me segue. <laughs> let me segue. Speaking of Japan, uh, Samu Kerevery's back. Kerevery. Yep. Samu <laughs> Kerevery is back from that part of the world. Yep. He's running water as well in yep. the Brisbane wow. Club competition. They got me too. Yep. A couple of heavyweights. Bobby Boucher's. Yes. What got you on the weekend, Lou Ransom? Well, I loved seeing the uh, Aussie Sevens girls getting back on the park. Uh, Elia Green in particular, very impressive. Good hairstyle from Elia at the moment. Well, she's had that for a long time now. Yeah, but it's, I reckon it's longer. Do you think it's yeah. COVID? COVID yeah. My God, she ran at some... What about that team? She though? ran at some... I mean, it was, that team should have won Chloe by 50. Yeah. Shani Williams and Elia Green, like three yeah. gold medalists turn up. How did they go? They won just yeah. against East. East hung tough. East Elia, good. Elia ran at a couple of... Uh, the East uh, women, and it was it was not Carnage. pretty, not pretty watch. Oh, mate, tough so to watch. She's tough so powerful. Tough to watch. What do you think about Good all that chat you. about those girls potentially Go playing in a bit of rugby league? I'd love to see them go there. Great. Because I really do think that Elia, Charlotte, I really think they're a class above. I'm going to tell you why I think that's a terrible idea. Because if they go to that competition, they'll become role models in rugby league. And kids coming through, girls, yeah. if I'm paying their wage as Rugby Australia, yep. Are going to go, wow, but if they're not, I'll go if they're that's not paying right. their wage, yeah. though. Oh, they just need know. to play some footy. That's the most important thing. Whether they're doing it now, playing in this oh, city club competition. Of course, we want to see those girls in our game, but I also think it's they great to maybe it. cross I think over. We all and agree. Yeah. Maybe we, what we could do is, like, what, what it might do is bring some of the rugby league supporters to rugby yeah. when they come back from rugby league. Like, you know, get them to really fall in love with the girls and the, and the, the skills and the you know what they yep. like the level of play that they have. And maybe we can start bringing a few of the fans back our way. Interesting. Mm, very interesting. OK, Super Rugby, Rocks and Diamonds. What you liked, what you didn't like from over the weekend. Hoylsey, what do you got? Well, it's the same instance. I really liked the extra time or the super time in the Rebels game. I, I liked it because it was played down the right end of the field. Yeah. So the Rocks was poor Jeremy Thrush missing the kickoff, which gave the Rebels the chance to, to play for a try. And I think if it showed if played in the right spirit and you're playing for a five-pointer, it can be really exciting. I, I quite liked the end of that game. Nice. For me, Rocks and Diamonds, I, I thought it was um, young Mac Mason. He came on at uh, the back end of the game. For Mac the Hanson. Sorry. That's all right. Mac Mason did play. I actually really like Mac Mason. And that's yeah. maybe why I had him in my head. But I also yeah. like Mac Hanson. Yeah. Anyway, he came on at the back end of the Brumbies game. He had a chance to draw level um, with a conversion attempt. Sprayed it. And that, that, the thing I like about it, and this word goes to my, my Diamonds, is you don't often get a chance to rectify a wrong mm. that soon. Uh, sometimes, and especially for young players, you might have to sit on it, stew on it for a number of weeks. But he got an opportunity to get a penalty goal late in the game. Just lined it up and said, yeah, give me the ball. Just brushed off everything that had happened previously and put it through to go one clear and, and win the game. And, and yeah, that, that was my diamonds. Just to, for him to get that opportunity to kind of right those wrongs so soon after and then go up there and step up. Put it all aside and, uh, and, and get the. Get I like the, the, I like the skin that he was singing Return of the Mac in his head when he lined up the <laughs> second swing. Remember that song? Yeah, Mark yeah. Morrison, yeah, a great song. Return yeah. of the Mac. Yeah, it's very good. No, Keep back. going. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll park it there. Okay. Uh, and I'll give you my diamond. Geordie Patea has been forever since we've yeah. seen him on the park. Hamstrings are good. He was amazing for the Reds the other night. Uh, that's that's my diamond, the rock, his hairstyle. Yeah. Not feeling it, not vibing it whatsoever. Just, there's a lot of bad hairstyles going around at the moment. Like, who thinks that mullets and no sideburns and all that shit? Are is you the a good ones look? to be talking about bad Whoa, hairstyles? Says you. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. In your career, though, you <laughs> no, had a few good ones. Could we do that with you one episode? No, maybe? We can't. <laughs> Come on. But you know no. what I mean? Do you, do you like the mullet trend and the no, the no I sideburn don't thing? Like, no, of course. No. I think like, it was acceptable if you're a Highlander because it was South New Zealand thing. Sideburns. But then I know it's really good. Yeah. Like, this is going out with no sideburns. But I also think. It's a bit of a rite of passage in your career to maybe have some questionable. Yeah. Look, I don't mind it from just standing out. You question mine now, out. but at the moment, at the time, we've like, had this discussion. Like, yeah. My back, my Beck and Mullet a you little bit in the back was mm. a bit on trend. Cheesy was good. I don't Jordan mind potato, potatoes here do you mind as long as he's going to no. play like that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, again, you went through about a few bad ones last year. Like it's just a bit of a thing that people go through. It is. Yours, Lou. What do you got? Okay, so a hundredth game for Aaron Cruden. Great to see him with the Chiefs. Chiefs though get another loss. This is more of a rock. For Sean, potentially. Can we just clarify? I'm not paying for everyone's lunch. Yeah, you, you are. are. That's we'll go I mean. back to the tape. Okay. And no. the thing was, no. if it's a team, team, we're a team. We're a team. team. Yeah. If your team wins, <laughs> if your team <laughs> wins, <laughs> your team wins you get a free lunch. lunch. How many the games do you pay for it? New Zealand? Not enough. For not the enough. The Chiefs. It's like two or three rounds. Not many. If their donut wins, you're 
doing that show the week after noon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You can, you can, wow. you can cover your modesty with one yeah. of the club jersey. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the big stories from the week, let's get into those. And first off, there was an article written by Julian Linden from the Daily Telegraph in Sydney, and he was comparing the two Super Rugby competitions in Australia and then Super Rugby Aotearoa as well. Uh, he was saying that the ball is in play for two minutes more in the Australian competition, but then I guess the comparison for the final series or lack thereof in New Zealand is something that Wait, is maybe lacking. Just, just to clarify, he said that the New Zealand Super Rugby competition is inferior to the Australian. It was something along those lines, yeah. That, that was the angle he was going with. OK. Yeah, and I get the I impression that you I disagree with that. Well, yeah, I think it's important to, to, to make... to focus on the points as to why he said it. He's not talking about the, the, the standard of footy or the, okay. all that. He's talking about okay. the fact that the Aussie uh, games have, on average, got two more minutes of ball in play time, which is what we all want to see, more, more ball in play time. Okay. And also the fact that the rugby, uh, the Australian Super Rugby uh, competition have a final set up. So first past the post gets a week off, second and third play for that other spot in the final. Whereas New Zealand, they've only got like an English Premier League type set up. Yeah. Whoever wins at the end of the regular season wins the competition. Yeah. That's all he's saying. Oh, well, I, know okay. that, I know okay. that you're so on that. Oh, I, think, I think he's spot on with the final series. Mate, especially there are five when we don't teams. know. Especially when we don't know what's going to happen. There are five teams in the competition. Chill, <laughs> I didn't write it. You need I to know, write. but you're here defending the decision. No, no, there are five oh, teams. Teams. <laughs> I just think because there's such a, there's going to be such a big gap potentially between what they do after that Super Rugby NZ and Test Footy. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there is time to play a competition, a final series. Yeah. I'd like to see final series play. <laughs> and also, wouldn't you? I, I, no, wait, no. Yeah. Listen, there are five teams total. You've said that, yeah. Okay, you've got your numbers worked yeah. out. Put your hand up like that, then wipe away two. You've still got three left for the final series. It's madness. More people go through the finals and lose out. It's crazy. Yeah, but... Yeah, but I, I still think... I also think, like, none of us like a draw. Like, there needs to be a grand final, there needs to be a final at the end. Yeah. Didn't like say there should be a final. Just not a final series. A final series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, only yeah. five it, teams. It's, it's only like two and three play off to play the next week. Like Craziness. It's not really a series. Yeah, short. I would have been happy with You guys framed this as a series. I would have been happy with no, no, we, we, we just know we just, know know we just did one and two, but I just think first past the post, in this climate, when there's a shortage of rugby, give another couple of games if you can. And there's been more games in the Australian Super Rugby Conference. Uh, that have been decided by 10 points or less. Like the, the games are closer. There's not as many bias yep. as they, they're experiencing in New Zealand. Maybe it's because every team, still to this point, yes. st every team has a chance to make the finals. Yep. But it, it might where's be your that, Chiefs, where's your Chiefs? Any, Maybe. Then what are they playing and for? I know right that now? This, is, this goes to New Zealand. I'm sorry for my friends and family in, uh, in, in the Waikato Hamilton. region. Yeah, well, my my sister in law's from Hamilton, so. Yeah. Um, but maybe they've thrown the towel in a little bit. Mm. Nah. The Chiefs, I mean, I'm not suggesting Maybe they that. want to see you on this maybe show no, next week, eight. Sean. The Chiefs under Warren G? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not a chance. <laughs> Warren G. <laughs> Warren G. <laughs> How come we've never run with that earlier? I like that. I don't Warren know, because G. maybe Warren G is not really someone you want to be linked to, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't he, like, got a few clouds hanging over <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe we just I leave that. I'm, I'm thankful if we get more games like the Brumbies Reds game. And let's be completely honest the Brumbies Reds game and the yeah. Reds Tars game, and potentially Reds Force up there, they're three standout matches yeah. from yeah. across what has been a number of games that have been played out. The Norman New Zealand has been top, top level. Yeah, we've, we had, we've, yeah, we've had yeah, some yeah, really, yeah. really we good agree. games okay. in Australia. We've had some not so good games, but at least the not so good games have been close in, in scoreline. I, I, gotcha. I think also, generally speaking, the games that you know, the Aussie teams have been playing this year have been a far greater spectacle than some of the, the derby games we've experienced in, yep. in the last probably five to ten years in, in yep. maybe Australian Super Rugby, you know, and, and you know, we've been involved yeah, in yeah. some of those. So um, I, I just think the intent and the, the way that they're going out there and the, the way that they want to play and the expansive style, I think it's the games are getting um, much more exciting for, for the viewer and, and that can only be a positive as well. A new segment here on the Aussie Rugby Show, Gone But Not Forgotten. We're going to remember some of our favourite rugby players, both on and off the pitch. Sean, this week, I, uh, I'm giving it to you. I got landed with the starting debut for this little segment, You're which welcome. I'm totally on board with. Is awesome. Uh, this man's won everything in world rugby. I mean everything, including a John Eels medal with... Jeremy Paul, 2004. Ah, uh, yes. JP. JP. One of the one of your guys' favourites. Yeah, Uncle Ming. 
JP Uncle Mick, hell of a player. Great he was player. always very good to the young guys coming yeah. in, Jeremy Paul. Yeah, he very was. Very popular player. And yeah. could get around the park too. Well, he had he had what was known as Fat Man's Alley. He used to position himself right in the middle of the field. Anytime there was a line break made, he was between the... 10 metres either side of the post, basically. Yeah. That was Jeremy Paul territory, and he was just up and down the middle all game. Scored a lot of tries, support playing. We're obviously not just about the on-field, though, no. this segment. <laughs> Off-field probably outweighs the on in many regards. Well, I've taken it to another level with uh, this segment. I caught up with him last week, and this is how JP dodged Eddie Jones after a night on the Terps. Check this out. When we used to come out, go out, we knew Eddie Beaver would get up around about... So Eddie Jones is Beaver. He'd get up anywhere from sort of 4.30 to 6, well, probably 5.30 to 6. So you never caught the elevators, you never caught the lifts, or you never came home at that time. So you'd just stay out at a cafe or whatever and you'd come walking through the main <laughs> corridor like at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and the management would be sitting there and they'd go, what's it, why are you up so, oh man, you'd hold a paper, <laughs> couldn't sleep, <laughs> like this one, just went for an early breakfast, no worries mate. <laughs> so it was like, and you'd have to go and buy another shirt from somewhere <laughs> as well. I know, you came up, because I remember George Smith, like, oh, we came home from, we were in Coffs Harbour and he came stumbling, we were stumbling home, and I think it was like a Wednesday or something or a Thursday, and we were like going, oh, where's Jorge? So that was George Smith's Spanish word for George. And we're going, where's Jorge? Where's Jorge? Like this one, he'd stumbled off to the left. And we went, no, like this. Because we were going up the, uh, yeah. up the uh, fire escape. <laughs> <laughs> we are going up the stairs. And we go, no. Oh, dead man walking. We're just leaving, we've got to cut a good man loose Go sometimes. And lo and behold, he pushes the left and Beaver walks out. No. At like, yeah, 4.30 or quarter to five in the morning. Got him. Got Smith. Yeah. I'm guessing it wouldn't have been the one and only time that they got Smith. Oh, look, I think George, he got caught a few times, but he backed it up on the field. Yeah. That was what was good yeah. about it. Well, that was the other thing that in that same chat um, with JP, he said that he, on Adam Ashley Cooper's debut game, took him out and slaughtered him. Yeah. It got to like four in the morning. He was begging to go home. He's like, me, take me home. I'm well, done. He's like, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. But... I'm going to drag you out of bed first thing tomorrow morning and I'm going to flog you again on that, the park. That was his, like, one of his biggest things. Like, if you want to play up, you've got to front up. And, and, and any player that sort of went out there and was, you know, we're, we're getting on the drink and whatever, and if you couldn't front up at training or at recovery or whatever your, your duty was the next day, travel days, if you didn't front up, then Ming and a, a few other senior boys just wouldn't allow you to go out and the drink again for the rest of that tour or whatever. So as much as they sort of went out there and enjoyed themselves, they're also the first ones out there doing the work and whatever. And he, you know, like you said it earlier, like he, do, he did a lot for, he's really inviting and accepting of the young guys when he's coming through. When I, on my first tour, I was over there, perhaps a little bit lonely. I was, you know, I didn't know a lot of these guys because, you know, I was 2004. I didn't actually, I was on the bench in the last game, didn't get on, but. Um, you know, I'd never met any of them really, other than the Queensland Reds guys that I was playing with at the time, and I looked up to like a lot of them, and they all kept stealing the little uh, mascot, that, like the Wally that I had to have, and I was too like I was too embarrassed and too shy to to confront them and ask them if uh, if they if they like stole it from me, and I would just get like because back in then those days, if Wally didn't go to some of the uh, you know the the, the venues, the venues, or, or the, yeah. the team yeah. photos and stuff, you basically got tannings, which is like pull your pants down and you cop Radiki Samos. I mean, his right hand. Yeah. Was this like, Tanny's high? Tanny's high, oh, yeah. 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 And Dan Vickerman was very good at it. And you'd be oh. split, whatever, but then Ming would always just bring you in and goes, look, I know, like, sometimes it gets a bit lonely on tour and whatever. If you ever need to, Uncle Ming's door's always open. He always had snacks. Maybe they weren't for me, the snacks. It, maybe it was always open, but he was snacks. never home. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, no, but Ming was always really good. He was always, uh, you know, he was always there for the younger fellas, knowing that, um, you know, perhaps... We're in, in environments, perhaps, that some of the other players, those older guys, weren't as comfortable. He was always the guy yeah. that would say, like, OK, like, this is where we're going after the game, and he'd go and source that throughout the week, and there'd be a signed Wallaby jersey given to a pub like this, and because he was big on making sure the team stayed together, because yeah. there's nothing worse than being away on a yeah, tour fraction. and having eight Marks groups out. of three yeah. guys going here. So he would say to you... And Eddie, to be fair, Eddie was very good on making sure the team went out, but Jeremy, that was his thing, you know, he'd, he'd organise where to go, he was smart enough to know where and what, what time to come home and how to get in the back door. He was um, a very good team man. And, a, yeah. a lot of lessons to learn from yep. Uncle Ming. Time now for the Aussie Rugby Show mailbag. And thank you so much for sending in all your questions on Twitter and Instagram. Much appreciated. Uh, first one, I'm going to kick things off. Drew, this one's for you. This okay. is from Tom Hampton. Tommy. Uh, what did you try to do to get out of a form slump when you were struggling? Uh, 
I, I think it's, it can be tough sometimes. Sometimes, you know, for varying different reasons, just uh, things don't go your way. But you start to doubt yourself. Once doubt sort of starts to creep in, you start to hesitate and, and you miss those little split-second opportunities that you get in the game. So, what? what? Well, just, is this on the dating front or, like, playing footy? <laughs> I mean, you know, on field. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't it was specific. specific. It wasn't a lot of facets, but <laughs> my... my my way of getting out of those form slumps is, is different because what I do, what I did back in the, in the day with rugby form slumps was watch footage. So I didn't do that in the, in the, in the dating uh, arena. You watched a lot of YouTube. I used to watch a lot of YouTube. Um, no, I, I did because when, you know, at, at points in, um, in your career where you start to, you, you find yourself in a, a bit of a form slump, you start to doubt things. And, and what I used to do was go back and watch myself and remind myself that I was capable. <laughs> no, this is about rugby, Sean. Oh, no, I'm with you. But I would remind myself that I was capable, that I was able to match it in that arena or against these players and whatever. And sometimes I think, you know, with, whether it be through media or through... Um, <laughs> you're oh, all I'm just... I'm not laughing, yeah, but continue. Oh, I know, look... <laughs> yeah, I've lost it, yeah. But yeah, so I used to watch a little bit of footage. But I've got a question. Who's yours um, for? Mine is for Louise, Luke. and it is uh, from Sorters. Sam Orders. he's a big fan from Hong Kong. Mm. Favourite cheat meal? Ooh. Um, I love a big bowl of pasta. That's my that's oh, my yeah? favourite meal. But I reckon a burger, and I'm doing my, my Shoot Shield burger tour yeah, this right. season. Tour just to, um, to see you're which at, is the best burger. You're at Chatswood this weekend. I wonder what they're yeah, level off from stag Ten good. weeks ago, you won't be able to fit in that chair by the end of the Shoot Shield. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't <laughs> go <laughs> shame. Like, again, you body shamed a few times on this yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm not about you're a that. Big body Lou, I think you, you look great. You'll just fit <laughs> in that chair, no matter what. what That's about, right. It's a cheat meal. It doesn't count. Cheat meals. Hold on. What about your cheat meals? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't cheat. It's not like cheat. Cheat. It's not cheat. It's not even blocked. I'm in. loyal to everyone. <laughs> I'm a loyalist. I'm loyal as a day is long. Let me ask you a question. Um, <laughs> I'm quite hungry. <laughs> I think about it. Those pizzas hey, go. We just smashed about three pizzas. Uh, Cat and Field do a hell of a, a wood fire pizza. Uh, Stephen Halls, yours is probably the only rugby related question. Um, would you pick who? Who would you pick at number eight for the Wallabies? And that's asked by the Gus at the Robusto. Uh, good question. I think there's a fair few at the moment that are playing well. I, I'm a big fan of Pete Samu. Issa Nicerana is incumbent. I thought he had a good yeah, start to well. his test season last year. But I also think Harry Wilson is going to be a very, he's very... emerging, yeah. yeah. he's an emerging... I also think Will Harris from the Waratahs, who's played a couple of games, mm. who's injured at the moment, is a very good young emerging player. If I had to pick it now, I would probably go to Pete Samu because of what he can do in attack. I really like the fact that he's just a little bit unpredictable. I think if we're trying to pick a side that he's going to take on the best, we have to yeah. pick a side that can score points. And he, at the moment, has the most amount of natural attack in him. Um, but I think Harry Wilson and Will Harris will be very good long-term number eight. How good was it seeing Harry Wilson running in from like 30 out the other oh, day? He's a, he's a quality... He's, he's playing as if it's his third or fourth season of Super Rugby. It's yeah. his first. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, really impressed. Good attitude position, too. we've got a lot of players. Sean, I'll ask you a question. Go. And it centres around the back row as well, and this might actually have something to do with who plays number eight. It sure. says, do you reckon Michael Hooper needs a break from rugby? He's looking tired and a bit over it mentally. He's gone so hard for so long, and that's from Simon R, which is... At Rugby Smart Arts. Nah. Oh, hang on. Just nah. beforehand, I want to shame him because nah. his tweet, he said Michael nah. Hopper. Come yeah. on, mate. Nah, he knows. Is there a Australian Cup? Spell his name right. right. Yeah. He knows who no, Michael Hooper is. We all do. Everyone around the world knows who Michael Hooper is. No, he's fine. I mm. caught up with him, would have been about six weeks back before the season recommenced. Tanned, relaxed after spending plenty of time in the water surfing. The Got married. The surfer been um, pumping, yeah. married. No, he's You know why this is, these he's questions come up? Because he gave away a couple of penalties on the weekend and everyone said, oh, he looks... He's disappointed with his side, he's frustrated. He's just trying his heart out like he always yeah, does. And he's in a side that's not going that well. So he's I smart. think he's fine. He's had yeah, a break. He's, he's had 12 yeah. weeks off with COVID. I think he's totally. good to go. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way you'd even be able to stop him from wanting to play. <laughs> I mean, good luck with that. Is he going to play good for Manly at some stage this as well? The other oh, big would you bother, so honestly? This, no, no, but this, this is the fun. other big because story he loves that's coming it so much. out. Yeah. He loves it so much uh, that bounced out last week. So he's almost tried to create a situation where he can be available for Manly v the Rats, which is the biggest club. Who would you be going for in that game? Uh, Michael Hooper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the biggest club competition or cl club game probably in the Southern Hemisphere, I would say. Oh, come Ooh. on. Listen, club Get game. Get your hand off it, mate. Yeah. True story. 9,000 people Queensland there. Queensland Universe Brothers. How many people would be there for that game? Heaps more than your one. More than 9,000? Well, Ooh. it can be only the you same in COVID compliant. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. The schools get I, didn't say I didn't say schools. Did I'm not you? talking schools. Okay. I'm talking club. You said club. I want to start talking a bit more about the Queensland Premier. I think we're a bit too strong on the shoot.
Okay. We're Sydney-based people. We we're need to get up there. We're banned from Melbourne because of me and we're banned from Queensland because of COVID. Yeah. So yeah. In, yeah. in any case, that'd be a hell of a result. I've got another question. Yeah, that would be great. Two. Uh, it sort of goes on the club sure. rugby theme. Jeez, it's from it Peter Boylan, <laughs> maybe Boylo. Boylo. Um, when, boy, when playing he's, Super he's Rugby... He's the Balmain guy. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. From here? Yeah. That's why I said Boylo. You used to hand you the used to have bag. Yeah. You used to have a few more. Uh, yeah. When playing Super Rugby, would you have preferred playing games at suburban grounds with atmosphere? Great. Why should we rush back to large stadiums when COVID crowd numbers are so poor? Bring rugby back to the people. It's yeah, look, I, I think it's it's a... I mean, it's, there's so many different elements to it. I think the bigger ones bring a lot of money, and that's what the why the teams sign with them, like yep. the Stadium Australia's of the world. Uh, ideally, you'd like to play in a full stadium. So whether you can, if you, if the capacity that you can fill with your game and your team at the time is 10, 12,000, then go to a local suburban ground because that creates a, a, a genuine atmosphere. You, there's no point playing that. Well, in terms of atmosphere, there's no like no one likes playing in a 12,000 Australian, you know, Stadium Australia out and uh, out at Homebush. But I think it comes down to a little bit more money if it was. If we take money out of it, you just want to play in full stadiums. I, you know, my experience in France, at Toulon, we had an 18,000-seat stadium. That packed every week is better than, you know, sometimes half-filling an 80,000-seat yep. stadium. You know, like, every time, actually. Like, the, the, the atmosphere that it can create is always so much better. So I would just find... In, you know, what we would do, we'd, ha we'd play our bigger games in Marseille with a 60,000 or Nice with a 40. So maybe that's something that the Waratahs moving forward can look at. A couple of suburban grounds and then the bigger games that bring the bigger, uh, the bigger sort of uh, crowd attendances, they go to, you know, um, you know, out of Bank West or Stadium Australia or whatever it is. But I th unfortunately, I think a lot of those decisions are made around finances. OK, let's get to our weekend forecast on the Aussie Rugby Show. We predict where each panel member is going to be this coming weekend. I'll kick oh. things off. Stephen Hoyles, you are going to be crossing your fingers for some great snow to fall at Perisher because we are heading there next week for this show. It's funny you say that, the forecast. The forecast, they're saying a metre snow, Sean. <laughs> that's really? deep. A metre snow. That's real deep. I've been in lot. some snow in my time, yeah, but a metre's great. Lot. That's <laughs> deep. I'm going to predict you. I hear little birdies. You're birdie. face first in that kind of snow. You're going deep. down to see Winter Giddo, Matt Giddo oh, and yeah. Bianca's brand new baby daughter. I yeah. predict you'll get down there Friday night. They'll give you maybe five to ten minutes with her. You'll make an ass Excuse of yourself me. and then you'll get sent out and you'll be wandering the streets of Canberra. <laughs> and I'll be wiping her little ass and putting a nappy on. You'll plan to spend the weekend with the giddos. You'll get half an half hour with her and then you'll be you out with Hugh Evans for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> oh, no, I want to stay away from Hugh Evans. OK, I'll predict Shawnee. Shawnee will start quite nice. You'll get a bit of a long board action out there in Manly. Get, uh, get your little daughter, the Yazzie, to take some photos yeah. to make sure we all know that you can surf. Yep, fine. Shoot shield. Uh, quite a number of cheap meals. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see you at the snow. Might have some cheap drinks too. If we keep them, who's keeping count? Okay. Keep what count, about we? Louise? Well, I'm going to predict that Lou gets lost driving to the snow on Sunday. <laughs> It's, I'm going to yeah. predict that you take a turn off. Yeah, it's highly likely. Near that McDonald's <laughs> in Kizikuma. <laughs> and we, we may not see you. This is why I'm going to lift with someone because yeah. it won't end well otherwise. I just mean to just do don't take story, directions from him. We were going from Kuma to Canberra because Drew was about to call his first test match yeah. and there was a, a bad accident on the. And there's one mm. road from Kuma, Kuma oh, to Canberra. I remember. So I said, follow me, fellas. <laughs> It took us four and a half hours. No, I, I'm, I'm someone who gets anxiety quite a lot as well, going to my so first yes, test. So <laughs> yes, we've got a hooker right here. We've got a hooker right. And we, we start, the we start off, like, we go out through these mountains. And I go, well, this is pretty remote. He goes, no, nah, she'll be right. And then Tarmac stops, dirt road. Dirt road. I'm sliding like, no out. Phone signal. <laughs> no phone signal. And then Drew goes, this is pretty grim. I go, mate, this is the worst thing ever. He goes, should we count how many dead kangaroos we can see? And one that. <laughs> Wombats. Uh. It was 10 points for a wombat, 20 for a roo. Yeah. <laughs> Four <laughs> hours later, by Queen Bee. Yeah. first test match, call and Drew was shaving. <laughs> I had to car. shave in the car park. I was, oh. But we got there on yeah. time. You we made got it. There. We got there, and a year later, I'm going to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can put it down to that. OK, so the moral of the story is don't get a lift with Hoylesy. Is no, that right? No. True. OK. Won't be doing that. Uh, guys, thanks so much for your company once again for the show. Drew Mitchell, Stephen Hoyles, thanks Sean so Maloney. Great to you. have you here. Great to be here at uh, Cat and Fiddle in Balmain, home of the Balmain Rugby Club. Thanks so much for hosting us. Guys, we've got a podcast do we, as do well. We? Yeah, no. we're a podcast now. There's a bit going on. Yeah. Some people global. are actually working on this <laughs> yeah. set up. Not that you'd know, but there's some people doing some stuff yeah. behind the scenes. Uh, so find us there. Put it on in the car when you're going to work or, you know, walking the dog. What or do get you lost do? between Coomer and Canberra. <laughs> there's plenty of There'll opportunities. There'll be no signal to listen to it. <laughs> Download it before you go. That's the there's ways. Uh, guys, thanks so much. Thanks to your company as well. Wherever you're watching, we will see you next time.